Okay, hey everyone. Uh, so we're gonna start the same way we did last time, just standing on our mats and doing a twist. So just twisting back and forth and trying to be as loose as possible. Try and just let your head follow the direction of your body as you're twisting. Okay, now we're gonna do a similar exercise to what we did last time, but this time we're gonna reach up. And when we reach up, we wanna try and spread our fingers actively as wide as we can. And then relax them. And this time, reach up and spread your fingers wide, but then also close them. And when you close them, you're doing so actively as if you're squishing a ball rather than just like weakly closing them. So put your hands straight up and just open and close them straight up in the air. And you're trying to reach up with like every part of your body and your shoulders and your arms extending as high as possible. And then you're just gonna Shake your hands out, put them down by your sides. And then we're gonna do one more. We're gonna reach up. And this time you're just going to keep your hands extended as wide as you can and just hold it there. Okay, now Relax them again. Okay, so that's just a quick little warm up for your body and your hands and wrists. And now we're going to go into a forward fold. So keep your legs pretty straight, allowing for a small bend in your knees. And we're slowly folding over, over the course of about 20 seconds, very slow forward fold. And at the bottom, let your arms relax and hang down. You can also cross your arms. Okay, and now again, we're very slowly going to squat. So keep your top half down, but now you're just folding at your knees and hips to squat your butt down. Now at the bottom of the squat, we want to get onto our toes. So we're going to rock forward so we're on our hands as well as our toes. And then now you're going to come forward onto your knees. So you're on your knees and toes. And then you're going to sit back as much weight as you comfortably can into your toes. So if you need to keep some weight in your hands, you can do that but if you can sit right up and put all your weight into your toes, which are on the ground like this, then do that. And this is a nice stretch for the feet. So you might only be able to do this for a few seconds, in which case you can like come out of it and go back. But we're gonna be doing this for a few more seconds. And then we're going to come onto our hands in this tabletop position. And we're going to start doing 
a hand exercise, a hand and wrist exercise that's going to build up in, in intensity as we go. So first, you're in tabletop. So I have my feet flat down like this uh, in my tabletop. You can also go on your toes, either one is good. And you're gonna rock forward and backwards. Forward and backwards. So when you rock forward, more weight is going into your hands. And as we come forward, each time we come forward, we want to be putting weight into our fingertips. So you squeeze through the hands and through the fingertips. And this is gonna change the way the weight is distributed through your hand. And the goal is it should remove some of the weight from your lower palm and it should put more of it in your fingertips. So rock back, you take the weight out, rock forward, putting weight into those fingertips. And you're kind of like squeezing through the mat, like again, as if you're squeezing like a ball or something. And if it's getting too intense, just like, you can take a break, you can massage your arms, you can just chill. But if it's not getting too intense, then let's just keep it going. And if you want more, then the way you're gonna do that is basically stay forward, forward longer and put more weight into your hands. So you kind of have to gauge that yourself. <clears throat> Okay, we're gonna do about 10 more. And I really like to focus on my pinky and make sure like my pinky is also doing some of the work. All right, now we're gonna come back onto our knees and our toes, or if you don't want to stretch your toes, you can just flatten your feet so your legs are just flat on the ground. Either way, we're gonna be kneeling on the ground. And now we're gonna do a little hand exercise I really like where you just interlock your fingers and then you're going to just take turns squeezing each side. And if you can, uh, I think it's good to like squeeze quite hard. Feels really good. And then we're going to kind of like apply a shearing force by like twisting at our wrists with one hand at a time. So you're kind of stretching through uh, the different axes that the fingers can move through. Then just interlock and kind of roll them. All right, now we're gonna do some cat-cow. And as we're doing cat-cow, again, try and think about how you are putting weight in your hands and try and get some weight going into those fingertips. All right, so cat-cow, to start, we're gonna go in tabletop, and then we're gonna exhale and round our backs. And then inhale and do the cow portion of the exercise. Exhale and cat. Inhale and cow. Just keep going, alternating between these two. Okay, now return to tabletop. And now we're going to bring our right leg forward for a right low lunge. So your right leg's in the front, 
And just going back to a concept from last week, the pelvic rotation. So it might be easier to get this feeling, this sensation in a low lunge uh, rather than a high lunge. So basically the goal here is to get stretch in the hip flexor. And to do that, we're going to tilt our pelvis up. So tilting your pelvis up means your abs are contracting and your butt is squeezing and you're kind of humping. So you're just doing that, but uh, you're, you're holding that rather than like, you know, so you, you hold it and you try and like maintain that stretch. And yeah, that pelvic rotation is what should enable the hip flexor stretch to come through. So hopefully you can feel that stretch, but either way, just stay in low lunge for a little bit. And then we're gonna raise up by going onto our hands first for stability. And then you're gonna come onto your left toes for a high lunge. And then you're gonna rotate your back foot so that it is flat and about 45 degrees. Then you're gonna rise up. Extend your arms for warrior two. In warrior two, you always wanna try and imagine your spine and you want to try and make it as straight a line as possible. And that's a feeling that's going to come with a lot of practice. And one thing I want us to do today in this warrior two is to look down our right side and look down your middle finger and try and make the middle finger point as straightforward as possible and look at the tendon in the hand and look at how that tendon connects into the finger. Just try and make that straight. Also consider your rotation of your hand and also this way and just try and make everything, just play with everything, all the different axes of rotation and try and make it whatever seems good, just good. Don't do bad, do good. Okay, and then we're going to bring our left leg a little closer. And then we're going to straighten the front leg and bend over for pyramid pose. You can put your hands on the ground if they reach. You can also put your hands on your leg. And if some bend in the knee makes this easier for you, you can do that, but try it to make it as straight as is comfortable for you. Okay, now rise. Put your back leg far back again, and then lower down and put your hands down to frame your front right foot. Then you're gonna bring that foot back and you're gonna be in a plank now. And once again, think about the activation through the hands and the fingertips. Just three more seconds. And then bring your left leg forward. And now you're gonna lower your right knee and we're gonna be in a low lunge on the left side. So once again, try and tilt your pelvis up so that you can get that stretch in the right hip flexor. Now we're gonna rise up to warrior two the exact same way as before. So we're gonna put our hands down for stability. We're going to get onto the right foot make it flat, 45 degrees, and then rise up into warrior two. And feel free to adjust the position of the feet if there's something that's gonna make it more comfortable. And again, we are looking down the center of that left middle finger.
right? You can rotate your back foot so that you're on your toes as you lower. Place your hands down for stability. And we're going to go into plank again. Just for a few seconds. And then you're lower to your stomach. Lying flat down on your stomach with both your hands in the same position they were in plank under your shoulders. Then using the muscles of your back, you're going to try and raise your head up into baby cobra. So you're putting as little weight as possible into the hands, using the muscles of the back to lift you. Okay, and then lower again. And then you're just going to roll onto your back. I'm probably out of frame. So I'm going to go to this side of my mat. So roll on your back. And from here, you're going to extend your arms out into a T pose. And then you're going to roll onto your right ear and back to center. Roll your head onto the left ear, back to center. Try to keep everything still and just roll your head side to side. So keep rolling it. And try to avoid bringing your head, your cheek to your shoulder. You're trying to only roll the head uh, in like a single axis of rotation. You're not trying to bring it down as well. So try for that. And the other thing is, the goal isn't to push the head. Like if you reach the end of your range of motion, you're not trying to just like stretch through to the end. You're actually trying to make the middle portion feel as easy as possible. And by making the middle portion feel as easy as possible, then uh, extended range will just like naturally open up. So I'm speeding up a little bit, but find a pace that's comfortable. I just find that as it gets easier, it just feels natural to roll a little faster. Okay, now we're going to roll up and come to cross-legged seat. Now we're going to massage our hands. So to do this, I like to kind of squeeze the whole thing. I'm starting by massaging my left hand and then digging my thumb into the ball of the left hand. Then I like to just like squeeze the whole wrist and as I'm doing this, like open and close the hands. And circle the wrists. And do whatever this is. All right, and then work your way up to the rest of the forearm. And for this part of the arm, I like to really like dig my fingertips into these tendons that are running up and into the wrist. And yeah, I find it really satisfying to move my hands and my fingers around a little bit as I'm doing that. And then there's this portion here that gets sensitive for me. I'm not sure how common that is, but I like to give that a little massage too. It's like right above the bone, there's this little wad of muscle. Okay. Now we're gonna go start massaging the right hand. Again, starting with just the hand. Yeah, I like to just squeeze the whole thing and like shift everything around. <laughs> All 
All right, gonna massage the ball of the right hand now with my thumb. Now squeezing the wrist, massaging the wrist, and opening and closing my hand at the same time. Just running through a, a few different things like rolling the wrist and opening the hand. Just whatever feels natural in the moment. Okay, now I'm going to work my way through the rest of the forearm. All right, and now I find doing all the stuff with my wrist, like the planks and the other stuff, tends to like tighten the wrists and then like kind of tightens everything up to my neck. So I like to also do um, like upper neck massages at the same time. So just like grabbing my traps and neck and massaging those two. And just try and like sit as straight as possible while you're doing this. I should have mentioned this sooner, but of cross legged like, isn't super comfortable. You just find a different position where you're comfortable. All right, now I'm going to move up the back of my neck and my the back of my head as well. And I'm sort of digging my fingers into the muscles on either side of the spine. And as I push into those muscles, I like push my palms into the sides of my neck and sort of um, squeeze them over top of those muscles. Then just rise like even higher to the base of the spine. Just like massage all the neck muscles. I like to really get like as much of my hand over as much muscle as possible. And then the final portion is to dig the base of your palm into the neck and the jaw at the same time. So you're pushing your palm into those muscles. Try and think about your posture and sitting tall as you're doing this. All right. So that's it for the massage. Now we're just gonna do one final uh, little thing. So get into a comfortable seat, which you should already be in. And then close your eyes, or you can leave them open for the first bit to see what I'm doing. But you're going to put your arms down at your sides so that the fingertips touch the ground as far out to your left and right as you can reach. And then you're going to inhale and lift them parallel with the ground. Then you exhale and bring them to touch in front of your chest. And then you hold your breath and you open your hands up and pass them around your face and then behind your head where they will meet again. And then you inhale to lift them up and then exhale to bring them all the way down. So the easiest way will probably just be to watch me and follow me for the first few. I'm just going to do it now without talking.
So we're just going to do three more. Okay, now just place your palms on your knees and try and sit up tall and just relax for a little bit. Try and maintain the elongated deep breaths. Okay, so that's it for the practice. And I just want to say you might find uh, like cross-legged seat to be like an uncomfortable pose at the start. Um, but as you keep going, like every bit of like hip flexibility you gain makes it that much easier. Every bit of core strength you gain makes it that much easier because that kind of pulls you forward. And like every bit of back strength you gain in those, in like Cobra and poses like that, that also makes it easier. So it might feel weird at the start, but over time, uh, cross-legged seats will feel like a lot more natural. But anyway, that's it. So <sighs> thanks for joining me. Peace.